fresh out the box. Fresh California plums. Hello and welcome to another episode of Fresh Film Fridays, the podcast where two dudes pick the newest streaming movies or in theaters and discuss them. Today we're talking about Pig, which was released in 2021 and was directed by Michael Sarnoski. I'm your co-host, Alec. I'm Justin. And uh, gotta say, gotta say, Nicolas Cage, you've impressed <laughs> me. You've impressed me. Really? I thought you were going to fucking rip this apart. Dude. All right. I looked at, <laughs> I looked at the reviews afterwards on <laughs> Rotten Tomato. On Rotten Tomato, it has a 97%. I was like... No, a critic or critic yeah what did the users or whatever uh, i don't i don't know fuck drop my phone hold on um imdb gave it a 6.9 okay that's much more realistic because when i saw rotten <laughs> tomatoes i was like i'm expecting godfather like casablanca citizen kane i'm like 97 <laughs> You're like, what did Russia hack this Rotten Tomato pig review? <laughs> I mean, maybe my like Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> fucked up, but yeah, hold on. Let me I'm gonna pull this up again. Okay, <laughs> 97 on the critics and 84 by the users. So I'm like, okay, this is gonna be a masterpiece. I'm surprised because usually the critics are like, I would have rather died than watch this. Dude, so. Roger Ebert is just like, this changed me as a man. Like this film. <laughs> but no, it's <laughs> Dude, okay, like it's a good movie, like very good, especially for Nicolas Cage. I'm like, okay, dude, this this is probably whoa, 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 whoa. Let's let's you know what I, I want to start off before we get too deep into this. First sure. off, yeah, six point nine. Before we start this, can we just take a minute and appreciate Nicolas Cage? Just... For those of you who don't know, because I got a lot of comments, that I got I got a lot of comments. Sorry, they're gonna say. I got a lot of tattoos. I got a lot of Nicolas Cage. I, I have a Nicolas Cage tramp stamp. <laughs> um, and, uh, now, uh, guys, if you haven't seen the movies, Gone in 60 Seconds, Face Off, Con Air, The Rock with Sean Connery, he was huge in the 90s for uh, action movies. And yeah. if you don't know, if you're probably wondering why he's in all these fucking garbage films lately... It's because he was in massive debt, dude, like super duper bankruptcy. He yeah. bought like a zoo of exotic animals, an <laughs> island, 16 mansions, outrageous shit, dude. <laughs> and if you go to IMDb, it says he's in 375 titles. I looked at it, dude, he's in like two a year for the past decade. It had, how? How's that possible? Yeah, dude. I mean, I feel like in the 90s, he literally he was in a lot of great movies like people. Everybody knew who he was. So he was making a lot of money. And then he just went crazy. He probably was just like, well, I got all this money. I'm just going to get married and divorce and buy all the shit. And then all of a sudden, the movies he started choosing were like shitty. So it's more like quantity over quality. And there's the money was just not there for those. So it's just Yeah, I'm assuming he's literally taking everything and anything people are creating just to get money back. Because like, if you look at the last 10 years, we're talking like D ratings, dude. Not good. I'm, I'm just looking at his, his uh, Wikipedia right now. One, two, three, four, five. Dude, he's had five wives in the past 20, 20 ish years. So, yeah, dude. You know what? He's got to, if he's going to do that, he's got to get prenups. <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming that has to do with why he's in so much debt because of that. He's that. And then, yeah, dude. Because what a life, though. Like, that's the thing. I'm thinking, like, right now, there's so much weird shit going on with, like, actors, and they're going to have to make a lot of, like, biography movies, like, 40 years from now, where it's, like, the Nicolas Cage movie. Oh, there's going to be a Netflix special, like, Beyond the Cage. <laughs> it's going to show all his crazy life. Well, I think it would be, like, interesting as, like, a drama about Nicolas Cage's career and all that stuff. I don't know. Played by Nicolas Cage. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's, like, 85. Imagine? Can you imagine he plays himself? Before I start this, though, I don't want to forget. So I'm going to quickly read the Twitter comments on this movie because, believe it or not, this was one of the most popular movies that we've posted and gotten comments on, Like, which is which blew my mind because I, I saw this the other day on Hulu and I was like, eh, another, you know, 3.5 Nicolas Cage movie. And I started reading more into it. I think people love it. So the first yeah. comment was number one Pauly Shore fan at It's Me, David Cross. And he said, I keep the rank list of movies I watch each year. Pig is number one. I went in thinking I can see a weird Nicolas Cage movie and left feeling genuinely moved by a terrific performance. And I, I wanted clarification on this. I said, Pig was your number one favorite for 2021. 
And he confirmed by sending the list. Huh. Nomads of Fantasy podcast, which I just did a collab on last night for the Prestige movie. I believe that's airing at the end of the week, so check them out. They said uh, they've been meaning to watch it. I've heard good things, and I've always loved some Nicolas Cage. I, too, have always loved some Nicolas Cage, <laughs> <sighs> even though he's been really hurting me lately. <laughs> um, <laughs> at Insomniac Snack, Pig was definitely my surprise pick of 2021. Such a great film. Completely unexpected. I've become a big Nick Cage fan lately, and this is definitely one of his best. I then replied... Have you seen the list of movies that I said earlier from the 90s? He did not see Gone in 60 Seconds. So, guys, if you haven't seen those four that I listed, those are his biggest and best films. Okay, wait. First of all, what about Leaving Las Vegas? Uh, okay, okay, yeah. But, dude, when when you think... He won Best Actor. He won Best Actor at the Oscars for that movie. Okay, Justin. but is that is that the movie you think of when you think Nick Cage? For me personally, yeah, because I'm not like a... I'm not like a fan of Nick Cage as like the myth, the legend, the actor kind of guy. I'm like just like, I oh, he's just another actor. But like Whoa. but no no, but you and and like my dad and a lot of people on Twitter and, and a lot of people see him as this like almost like a Bruce Campbell. Yeah, like he takes his he takes his face off in face I, off. I, I, and he gets stung by bees in Wicker Man and you know <laughs> dude. And he goes through moral dilemma if he wants to be a big famous guy or a or a family man in the movie Family Man. I've seen it, Justin. Weatherman, <laughs> I've seen them. Wicked Awesome said good movie with a great performance by Nicolas Cage. Stu World Order. Oh, Stu, Stu did not like it. Uh, <laughs> he said highly overrated. It is smart, well-made movie with something to say. Well acted, terribly paced as they clearly stretch a 60 minute idea past its breaking point into 90. And, we're, and I think we're both going to touch up on that. And then the last one here is Joshua Ryan. Pig was my favorite movie of 2021. Wow. And he also provided a movie rankings and it was, it was up there. And I checked out his Twitter. He's a film critic and he writes on a, a page called fandom wire so that, you know, he's a professional like ourselves, <laughs> but let, let's go into it. What do you think, Alec? Dude? I mean, like, this is not a bad movie. I'm not trying to shit on this movie at all. I just, I'm surprised that the reviews were so high and that Nicolas Cage did so well overall. The acting is really good. It's very well shot. It's emotional. The music's good. Like, it is a very good movie. I think it was just like when I see a 97, I'm thinking, like, this is going to change my life. The, the way it started off, though, kind of reminded me. Well, just really quick overview. It's basically just about a guy who lives. He's, he lives out in the woods. He's got a pig. The pig looks for truffles. He gets the truffles. <laughs> he sells them to a guy in the city. Randomly, his pig gets taken from him one night, and he's going out to get the pig. That's the movie. So it's just about a man and his pig. You know, <laughs> it is though. I mean, well, I don't know about you, dude. I I had to Google what truffle mushrooms were. Really. I thought because of how, like kind of like the om the omniance of the the movie that this was a drug. I thought no. like they were selling shrooms and this kid was a drug dealer. <laughs> and then I find out later like they're just using it to like funnel their underground like exquisite chef cooking. And I'm like I did not I did, I did not know that. You never gotten like truffle oil fries or or anything like that or yeah, truffle burger. Yeah. I have yeah I get truffle fries all the time. But I didn't. Did know you ever that. wonder what it was? I didn't know there were such things as fruit mushrooms. So, dude, yeah, so truffle is like, it's like, I don't know if it's a type of mushroom, but it's something they take off of the mushroom, or it might actually be a mushroom itself, I don't know, but, Dude, yeah. when I order truffle fries, I, I didn't, like, ask the waitress, I'm like, what is the truffle part? <laughs> wow, I would I would definitely question it, I'd be like, what is this? They're like, this is actually, like, a whale's asshole. It's like, oh. <laughs> this comes from the truffle mushroom in the Oregonian forest. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> no, truffle, yeah, so, I don't know, I don't. I don't know why it's like illegal or it's not illegal, but it's probably just like he's finding, I don't know. He's finding just such high quality ones that it's, it's making these restaurants like prestigious. Right. Right. Yeah. So, okay. So you had to look up truffle oil. Okay. I, th I thought it was drugs. I thought he was selling drugs. Cause I'm like, <laughs> how does this kid have like a fancy Camaro from mushrooms? I don't know. Maybe it's a, a an Oregon thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, have you ever seen that actor before the, the kid? Yes. What was he in? He was in Hereditary, which I love so much. But he's in that. He's also in this Jeffrey Dahmer movie, which I saw a while ago, where he like it's like this mm. the origin story of Jeffrey Dahmer is in high school, and this yes. kid Alex Wolf plays like his friend or whatever. Okay, I saw him in Jumanji. Oh, he's in the 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 one with the rock. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I don't even think he yeah, was yeah. Like born when the other one came out. Then... But yeah, so I mean, I thought he did a really good job too. He was good. I also like that actor Adam Arkin. 
Yeah. He's in like really random things and I couldn't put my finger. He's in Sons of Anarchy, if you've seen the show. Yeah. Well, dude, I gotta say, like, he's a good actor, but I did not really like his character in this. I, I thought he was going to be, I don't know, like, just more badass or tough or do something. He just kind of seemed like he was all talk, and he never really did anything. And what is he? He's just like a... What do you expect him to do? He's just a guy who sells uh, mushrooms to restaurants. I, I, yeah, he's just like, his threats, though, seem so, like, he's like, I will turn your pig into bacon. He's like, you don't know who I am. Like, I'll mess you up, sort of thing. And I'm like, all right, like, who is this guy? Like... I feel like if Nicolas Cage fought him right now, like Nicolas Cage would beat the shit out of him. So what is this? Yeah. The, I mean, I think it was trying to misdirect you a bit in the film. Yeah. So throughout the movie though, we learn that Nicolas Cage used to be this like renowned chef in Portland. <laughs> Everybody knew him. And, and then his wife died and basically his life just spiraled out of control from there. And he, he moved off in the woods and we slowly see him going back to like his house where him and his wife were in the beginning. We hear the tape of his wife and then we find out, you know, she she's dead. So he he yeah, I mean, he kind of I don't know. It's sad. He he, he kind of snapped after that. Yeah. Everyone knew him as this legend. I thought he was like kind of this like underground mobster drug dealer dude. And he's just that renowned of a chef that like every, everyone knew of him. But they thought he died because it had been so long. It is a cool concept. Yeah, I mean, it really does subvert your expectations because I was like, okay, this is going to be like a John Wick kind of like he's going to go in there and just, you know, fight it. Like, Where's my pig? You took my pig. <laughs> yeah, that's really what I thought was going to happen. But, dude, like, I I'm trying to remember, does he fight at all? I mean, I know he gets his ass kicked. No, he gets his ass beat, but he doesn't actually throw any punches. Okay, let's talk about that scene, dude. What was that? Which scene specifically? Like the fight club, but like, hey, it's a fight oh. club where we like beat up old men. The underground, like, chef fight club. I don't know, but it sounded like, for some reason, he had he was timed, like, by 60 seconds. He, in order, he had to, like, earn their respect by getting his ass beat for a minute or something. Yeah. I don't it, know. It, well, it seemed like there was a guy that looked just like Nicolas Cage right before that, right? There was, like, another old guy with a beard. Well, that was Edgar. Okay. The, the, the guy who was timing him was Edgar, which right. was the same dude at the tent who was like, you don't have any value anymore, even though you still retained all your cooking skills. So it was... Yeah, but right before that, wasn't, maybe I'm crazy, but wasn't there an old man with a beard who was getting his ass beat before Nicolas Cage got his ass beat? I think so. Yeah, yeah so like, what's up with that? Maybe it's like, it's like, hey, you get to beat up an elderly old guy for a minute. And that's like the game or like you have to pay for it. Like, it just seemed weird. They didn't really explain that. So I was like, it, it, okay, like, what is this? Yeah, there were, there were definitely some scenes. It was an odd film, dude. I'm like thinking to myself, this, this writer who he like sat down to write this and he's like, Hey, I'm going to write this story about these, these chefs in Oregon and ha and they're, I don't know. It was an odd concept. Odd for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think like it's, it's about, I don't know loss and, and what's important in life and stuff like that because the scene that really like stood out to me is when he goes to the restaurant and he goes to like one of his old i guess like apprentices or whatever and he like breaks him down for the information like that scene i was like dude that guy was like he had he admitted he knew what happened with the pig and he was like i'm just under such high expectations he's like you understand right chef i was like dude what yeah, but then, but but like Nicolas Cage kind of like just breaking down, like this is all bullshit, like you're not real, this isn't real, like none of this is real. And it is kind of true. I mean, this whole like cuisine kind of art and all that stuff, like it's really cool, but it's such a luxury. Like you see Nicolas Cage living out, just eating whatever he can find, drink, like washing his face in rivers, like as basic as a human can be. And then being a chef is like as far removed from probably being just like the necessity of life. Like you're doing all this pageantry to your food and all this stuff. And it's just, it is bullshit. It really is. Yeah. He basically told him like, the only reason people like you right now is because you're making the newest, hottest dishes, but you know, tomorrow there could be a, a new chef that creates a dish that's better. And then you'll just be another normal cook. This whole movie, it kind of, it, it, it shows it a lot more at the end, but this whole movie kind of breaks down the concept of like, you don't need a fancy car, all these riches or all these millions. He's like, sometimes you just need a pig, <laughs> which could be yeah. anything for you that you love that much, you know? Right. No, that, that is it. Like, it's just about like love, like, it, like just loving what you have basically. 
because yeah, in that he goes more into that chef too, where he's just like, and look at you, what did you want to own? He's just like have an English pub. And he remembers the dish that he wanted at his English pub. And what's he doing now? He's just working at some other restaurant doing what somebody else wants. And it's not even what he wants to be doing. So yeah, it's, it's deep, man, but you're right. It is just about love. Like, Alex Wolf's character and Adams Arkin's character, their mother and, and wife, mm-hmm. you know, she's in a coma or something like that. We assume uh, Rob, he loses his wife, Laura. So now he's got the pig. Like, it's just about being happy about what you have, not about what you want sort of thing. Yeah. And, and Nicholas Cage is making all these people who are buying his mushrooms super rich and like they're living these luxurious lifestyles, which he could probably take a bigger cut or live it himself if he wanted to. Yeah. But like all he wants to do is be left alone and just chill with his pig. It's like he wants the opposite of the American dream. I mean, he just wants to be a human. Yeah. That's really he just wants to be as basic as can be. And it's funny, too, because people are paying so much like money for this truffle on their expensive dishes. And it's literally coming from the ground with this dirty bearded man and a pig like digging <laughs> it out. And then they gives it to them like it is. It's a funny concept. Like you're taking something so disgusting and then selling it for so such a high price. It's uh, yeah. I don't know. It's deep. It's deep. This movie. It reminded me of like a, a little boy and his dog. Like all he wanted was the pig. Yeah. It is it. At the end of the day, that's all he wanted. You know, I would imagine being alone for that long after your wife had passed. Like he probably projects his wife onto the pig a little. Not not in like a sexual way. Like I don't fuck my pig. (laughs) That line is so funny. (laughs) Well, I was thinking maybe the pig is a symbol for his wife. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Exactly. That's what I mean. Like he's he's looking at it like I love this thing in the same way that I love my wife. Not physically, just emotionally. (laughs) So losing it is like I'm losing my wife. I don't know. Yeah, he's he's replacing his wife with the pig. And but dude, I thought one of the coolest scenes was the scene where he was showing the kid how to cook. Like they were cooking together. It was very like fatherly role of him to like show him how to do this because his own dad, like, you know, is so busy running his exquisite mushroom gang thing. And um that's kind of like the first sign in the movie for me, the biggest sign that shows that this movie's bigger than just, you know, it's not the the pig is symbolic. Yeah. You know what I mean, and that's that for me was the scene that represented what this movie's really about. Yeah, no, that is that is a good one because they're doing it to like you, you'd think like, oh, is he going to poison this Adam Arkin character? Is he going to like, you know, when he's making the food with the kid? But it really is just a, yeah, well, I mean, you know, you'd assume something like that. But then it's like now he's doing it to stimulate his memory through Hmm. food. And also, this was the first time in the movie that the kid stood up to his dad. Like, because the first time he knocked, he was like dinner and he was like, yeah, whatever, just go away. And then he he kind of like, he didn't like really stand up too aggressively. But he was like, we made you dinner. Like, get out here. Yeah. And then, dude, I that scene after where he started crying was like. I spent the whole movie hating him because I thought he, you know, like he, he was kind of a dick in the beginning, but he brushed Nicholas Cage's request off so easily. Like I'll give you 15, 20,000 for this pig, whatever. And then he started crying because he knew the whole time that the pig was dead and he just didn't want to hurt his feelings. Yeah. Right, dude. Like he tried to come off as this big badass. Like what about 20 million? And he could have easily just told him like, look, man, those meth heads killed your pig. But like, He's not a bad guy, dude. He just wants to sell mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. I, I did kind of look at it like through the lens of John Wick where I'm like, I want to hate this guy. He's the bad guy. But yeah, and this it is kind of like morally gray. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you think those tweakers did to the pig? I mean, I don't, I don't think they like specifically heard it because they won't, the goal was to sell it to make money. I think they were probably just dumb druggies who were rough with it. And, you know, I'm, I'm assuming a pig is, you know, softish animal. And it just yeah. maybe was hurt, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. It's fucked up just to think, like, what did you do to it? Yeah, it's it was sad, dude, especially when Nicolas Cage, like, broke down. And then the music oh. or, like, the audio dropped out. You're just like, fuck. He collapsed, dude. I, I thought it was going to end with him being, like, he makes him the dinner. Didn't they say that his, the the kid's mom died, too? He said it, but I think I, he was lying. I mean, she, she seemed like she was in a coma because that nurse was like, I'm going to go clean her trach. Oh, that, tr- that, like, I think that's the tube that goes in your throat. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, oh, God. I thought, and I don't know where I got this from. I thought the meal that Nicolas Cage cooked for the dad 
was like the wife's recipe. No. And that's why he started crying because he's like, it reminds me of his wife. And then I thought he was going to be like, all I want is my pig. And he was going to give him the pig and it was going to end happy ever after. And that's the opposite. <laughs> no. So what happened was because you, you hear Alex Wolf's character telling him, he's like, my mom and dad, they talked about this meal for years. And, you know, like that, that meal was the one that he made for them like years ago or whatever. So then because oh, okay. then he says, I remember every meal I've ever cooked for every person. And then he remembered making that meal that they loved and talked about for years. So he did that to remind uh, the Adam Arkin character of his wife and you know to break him down, basically, to be like, I'm a human, too. You're a human. Like. We all have this common thing and I don't know. Yeah, dude, it, it is a fucking good movie. And the more we talk about it and, and revisit it, it's still not 97%, but I'm, but dude, Nicolas Cage, it's good. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't put it at literally number one for 2021 for myself. I would go so far as to say what, well, I mean, 2021 had like historically terrible films, especially 2020. I would say it was one of the best maybe like top 10 top 15 top 20 of 2021 and definitely one of the best of nicholas cage in at least the last 10 years so. oh yeah i mean this is honestly probably my second favorite nick cage movie behind uh leaving las vegas which i'm not oh. a big nick cage fan so people people are hearing that they're like fuck you i'm like that's that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm like that's i i take that i take that <laughs> He also, I watched a movie with him pretty recently at work. It's called like Ghosts of the Pride Land, I think. And did you ever see that one? No, it sounds familiar though. It came out in 2021 and it's uh, not as good as this, but honestly, I was pretty surprised with how much I enjoyed that too. He gets bombs put on his balls, Justin, and they, <laughs> and they blow up his balls. So. Well, dude, he had a rough, uh, a couple movies before this, he came out with a movie called Jiu Jitsu, <laughs> which got a lot of popularity through it because I, I think everyone thought it was going to be good and it was literally like it got like a negative point one <laughs> it was like terrible well you know he didn't talk much in this i think it was more like he was reacting to things and he just had that gruff look and he just he pulled that off he really did yeah i mean he was emotional when he needed to be with the pig and his his role he was like he didn't need much talking you know no i didn't and i, I like that i mean and it's dude, like the way it ends is just sad. It's it's just reality. It's like, well, now I just go back and sit in my hut and listen to my ex wife. It's just, ugh. yeah. What does he do for the rest of his days? I know, man. This isn't like that happy go lucky chef movie with John Favreau. Where he's like, I just, you know, I got a fucking minivan with food. I got a food truck. I mean, he's definitely. He told the kid, "I'll see you next Thursday" or whatever. So like, he's still obviously providing the mushrooms, and I don't know. I'm assuming they give him just enough to survive money wise i don't know i would have really liked if it ended with like him coming back to the hut and there was like a baby pig there yeah it's too happy it's too it's too, i know it's too not real like that wouldn't happen you know well, what if what if the dad got him a baby pig you know i know but i feel like this movie has it's supposed to be sad <laughs> it, it wasn't meant to have a happy ending i get i get it i get it. yeah it's i mean john wick didn't really either well, he got another dog. Oh, he did. He did. And that one died too. In the second one? I think so. I can't remember. Because it wasn't in the third. Okay. So yeah, dude, this movie's kind of probably just like a more like, hey, like this is actually what would happen. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. also you eat bacon, so I don't see why you care. But anyways. Uh... <laughs> what about, dude, one of the cooler part of the movies was when he admits he doesn't need the pig to find the mushrooms. He says it's like, he's like, the trees show me the way. Yeah, I didn't know that either. I knew there, I always knew there were pigs that looked for truffles. Like, that's a real thing. But I didn't know that. <laughs> just... Yeah, dude. I found it when I Googled it. There's literally, they're called truffle pigs. Yeah. What yeah. Because they can smell the certain aroma. Of it. I don't like truffle. I don't like the taste of it. I How really is don't. this a thing, dude? I don't understand. <laughs> Yeah, I don't I don't know. It's it's just like eh, it's a weird taste. A lot of people love it, but I'm like it's an extra dollar for that. I'm like, nah, I'm not getting that. And it's an extra dollar. Nah, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't know. I just I don't even like the taste that much. I'm weird. I don't know. Give me some Heinz ketchup. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, you want you want the purple Heinz ketchup? <laughs> yeah, I want the Shrek ketchup, dude. Give me the green Shrek. That's ketchup. like Eric. Eric, if you're listening <laughs> to this, I know your mom was like she came home and she was like, Bubble, I got the green Heinz for you. Green Heinz. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. No, th I mean, but truffle fries, yeah, it's always been something where I'm like, eh, it's just a weird taste. Well, now I know, dude. Next time I see truffle fries on the menu, I'll know that like a pig found 
this mushroom and they somehow turned it into an oil. Nicolas Cage might have been the guy that found it for all you know. Who knows, yeah. Justin? Overall, what would you what would you rank this guy? Well, like I said, IMDb gave it a six point nine. I I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with a seven point five. I think it was a good movie, and I think a lot of people are gonna miss the the deeper meaning if they just sit through and watch it. But if you pay attention to it, I think it has some pretty important life lessons in it. Life lessons, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go with the seven. I, I, I think the 97 is a little bit high, but I think for a Nicolas Cage movie, it's one of his best. Very well shot. And, and honestly, top 10 for 2021 is, mm. you know, I enjoyed it. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, look deeper. Don't just look at this as like a John Wick or an, an average Nick Cage movie. Look at this for what it is and, and you might take away something more. I don't know. Yeah. All right, this has been uh, this has been an interesting week. We had so many things come out. So on Monday, if you haven't had a chance to listen, we had our uh, what was it? God, what came out this week? No, no, next Monday in a few days will be the new newer Dawn of the Dead. Book of Boba Fett came out a couple of days ago, and then each day this week, starting Tuesday, was a screen review leading up to the new screen. Right. Okay. So we have all those, and then this upcoming Monday we have. Uh, dawn of the dead so yeah so yeah lots coming out on uh, wheel four so all right well thank you everybody for listening in and we will see you guys on monday with dawn of the dead see ya